So the GTX 1660 Ti released almost a week ago, so chances are high that you've already watched multiple videos about this card, but there's some performance information that other YouTubers just aren't telling you. So let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new GTX 1660 Ti, but with a little bit different of a perspective than some other YouTubers. And if you're new here and you want to see more graphics card videos like the RTX 2060 video I did about a month ago, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 13 week class for all of you aspiring iOS and web developers out there. Their 13 week class focuses on providing you only the skills that you actually need to go out there and start your new career in coding. They don't waste time with a filler curriculum like at a traditional college. They also feature student housing at no extra cost, a variety of different classes, including UX design and QA testing. And most importantly, all of this is available at an affordable price. Head on down to that first link in the description to learn more if you're interested in getting that quick boost you need to start your new career in coding and design. All right, so like I said in the intro, I'm pretty sure you've all watched other GTX 1660 Ti videos before this one because I had to buy this thing on my own and wait for shipping, so I'm not going to dive incredibly deep onto the intro of this specific card. As always, if you're not interested in seeing my brand new benchmarking rig, which I'm really excited to share with you guys, or you're not interested in my different take on benchmarking, then feel free to skip to this time frame in the video. Anyways, the specific card that we're looking at today is the EV VGA XC Black Edition, which is rocking that massive 2.75 slot cooler. This is as cheap as the 1660 Ti's get, as you can easily find it for $280, which is what I paid for it, and we already learned from other YouTubers that the more expensive options just really aren't that worth it because you might as well spend the extra money on an RTX 2060. This EVGA Black Edition is rocking a boost clock of 1,770 MHz, 1,536 CUDA cores, and 6 GB of GDDR6 VRAM. One thing to note is that the ports are definitely lacking on this specific version as it's only packing a single HDMI 2.0B, DisplayPort 1.4, and a dual link DVI. For a $280 card, I definitely expected it to have at least two display ports, so just be aware of that if you were thinking about buying this for a multi-monitor setup. One other thing that I want to quickly mention is that I'm not necessarily saying that this specific 1660 Ti is the one that I recommend picking up. To be honest, I actually ordered the normal two slot and two fan EVGA version, but Amazon messed up my order, so if you guys could smash the like button for me, that'll make me feel a whole lot better about this situation and I really appreciate it. Moving on to the comparison of other graphics cards, I'm not going to waste your time because we've already seen that this card is right on par with the GTX 1070 in almost every game, so if you're interested in seeing how this card performs outside of the games I'm testing today, there's 10 of them by the way, then just look at the GTX 1070 numbers because that's about what you should expect. Speaking of which, the testing that we're about to do with this card today and my own take on benchmarking is that we're actually going to pair it with a system that you would pair with this GPU. So many other tech YouTubers are benchmarking marking this card with like a super expensive 9900k and that's just not realistic. Keep in mind that I do understand that there's a point in benchmarking cards like that. It allows us to see the absolute max performance that we can expect out of the cards without worrying about a bottleneck, but you should also definitely be aware that the performance numbers will be very different with the PC build that you would actually use with this GPU. With that being said, this new build inside the NZXT H500 case is my new testing platform and I'm super excited to share this with you guys. I'll be talking more about this build next week in a different video, but thank you NZXT for sending a case that's going to look super sexy in all of these b-roll shots in my benchmarking videos. Inside the case, the important parts we're rocking today for our testing rig is a Ryzen 5 2600X, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3000 megahertz, and our games are installed on a Samsung 840 EVO SSD. With all that information out of the way, it's now time for the benchmarks, and just in case if you're new to the channel, the settings that you're about to see for each game are the settings that I would personally play at if this was my card and this was my system. The first game up was Apex Legends, and here I quit quickly realized that the GTX 1660 Ti was capable of 1440p gaming, so I jacked the settings up too high, and here I averaged an impressive 125 frames per second. However, please don't mind the noob gameplay by the way. Speaking of noob gameplay though, Fortnite was up next, and for this one I could actually crank the settings up to 1440p in Epic, and here the 1660 Ti squeezed out an FPS average of 72. You could definitely get it towards the 144 FPS mark if you had a higher refresh rate monitor, I would guess that that would be around 1440p in medium settings. And for our last battle royale game for the day, 
elite player in those battlegrounds followed up next and in 1440p in high settings this system averaged 86 frames per second following that i tested counter-strike global offensive for this game i definitely could have cranked it up to 1440p but i realized that nobody plays this game above 1080p so i put the settings at 1080p and high and averaged 127 frames per second and finally to wrap up our easier to run games rainbow six siege was at next and with the built-in benchmarking tool in 1440p in ultra settings i averaged 131 frames per second getting into the newer and tougher to run games make sure you check out my latest benchmarking videos because there's been a ton lately battlefield 5 followed up next and in 1440p in high settings which looked absolutely beautiful i averaged 75 frames per second next up i fired up the shadow of the tomb raider built-in benchmarking tool and in 1440p in high settings i averaged 53 frames per second you could definitely crank it down to medium if you wanted a smoother 60 fps but as you can see from the 1% and 0.1% lows this was still a very smooth playing experience the next built-in benchmarking tool i used was assassin's creed odyssey this is yet another really tough game to run so feel free to check out my dedicated video on this one and in 1440p in high settings the gtx 1660 ti could crank out 52 frames per second following that was the brand new far cry new dawn and with its built-in benchmarking tool in 1440p in ultra settings i averaged just over our target 60 fps mark and finally to wrap up this benchmarking video with my absolutely least favorite game to benchmark metro exodus was up and in 1440p in high settings i only averaged 37 keep in mind that you'll get much better results actually playing the game compared to the benchmarking tool but i just wanted to show you guys that even this brand new card struggles with this very annoying to benchmark game so as you can see from the benchmarks this 280 gtx 1660 ti is absolutely crushing 1440p high gaming and it'll certainly crush 1080p and higher refresh rate gaming if you're more interested in that overall it's pretty tough to beat the 1660 ti in terms of price to performance for the new cards but like always you can find some much better value on the used market if you're interested in that well there you have it that wraps up my review and benchmarking of the brand new gtx 1660 ti but i want to hear from you guys next make sure you guys let me know down in the comment section what other content you want to see me do with this card i'm assuming it's going to be a pc build guide so let me know the price point i just want to hear from you guys now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because later next week we have yet another pc build guide coming it's probably going to be with this card you don't want to miss that video